the charnel grounds were where people dumped the bodies of those who died and couldn't pay for a cremation. So it's just a bunch of rotting corpses in various stages of decay. And sometimes this was a good place to practice. You just go sit in front of a corpse and well, the sutta tells you what to do. Again, as if one were to see a corpse thrown aside in a charnel ground, one, two or three days dead, bloated, discolored, festering, and compares this body with that thinking, this body is of the same nature, it will become like that, it is not exempt from that fate. Again, as if one were to see a corpse in a charnel ground thrown aside, eaten by crows, hawks, or vultures, by dogs or jackals or various other creatures, and compares this body with that thinking, this body is of the same nature, it will become like that, it is not exempt from that fate. Again, as if one were to see a corpse in a charnel ground thrown aside, a skeleton with flesh and blood connected by sinews. A fleshless skeleton smeared with blood connected by sinews. A skeleton detached from flesh and blood connected by sinews. Randomly connected bones scattered in all directions. A hand bone here, a foot bone there, a shin bone here, a thigh bone there, a hip bone here, a spine there, a skull here, and compares this body with that. Again, as if one were to see a corpse in the charnel ground thrown aside, the bones whitened, looking like shells, the bones piled up a year old, the bones rotted away to a powder, and compares this body with that thinking, this body is of the same nature. It will become like that. It is not exempt from this fate. So yeah, we don't have charnel grounds. So uh, it's a little more difficult to do this sort of practice. But notice it says as if. So you could do this just as a mental exercise. Uh, especially if you've seen a charnel ground, uh, which I know at least one person on this retreat has visited. Um, but it may be possible for you to do other things. One, if you're hiking in the woods and you come across some creature that has died, you could contemplate the decay of its body and realize, yeah, this is what happens to all bodies, including your own. If you co come across a creature that's died and you can revisit the area, then you get an even better sense of what's going on. When I was teaching at Cloud Mountain one time, there was an elk that died not far off the property. And uh, I found out about it at the start of my retreat. And over that month, I would go visit the elk carcass and watch the changes that were taking place. And then I came back six months later and yeah, wasn't much left. The bones, well, they weren't whitened, they were green. This is because Cloud Mountain is in, well, the rainforest of Washington state. And then I came back six months again after that and I had trouble finding the bones. There were just a few scattered bones around. And six months after that, there was no sign of the carcass. So that was kind of interesting. If you have a friend who works in a morgue, maybe you can go in and visit the bodies there. Uh, if there's a medical school nearby, you might be able to watch an autopsy. And there's an exhibit called Body Worlds that travels around and it's people who've donated their bodies and they've been encoded in plastic and you know they're opened up so you can see what's going on inside and so forth. And it's, it's really quite fascinating, uh, definitely recommended. So these are the possibilities for doing this practice. Um, the whole idea is just to remember, yeah, 
any body you're lusting after, their body's going to wind up like that. And your body is going to wind up like that. So just get a realistic view of bodies. Any questions or comments? The other practice I wanted to cover today is the four elements. But before I start that, I wanted, I should have mentioned yesterday that the parts of the body is one of the original five practices. And it's the only one of the body practices that's the original five practices. Um, mindfulness of breathing is not one of the original practices. It was just the parts of the body. But remember, the original version of the Satipatthana Sutta was an anthology. And it was an anthology of practices that, you know, perhaps weren't addressed as much uh, as uh, what you find, uh, say, many suttas on mindfulness of breathing, uh, etc. Okay, so the remaining body practice is the four elements. And the four elements are the traditional classic ones that we know from Greece, uh, <clears throat> they are earth, water, fire, and air. Um, I would say take this as symbolic rather than literal. Uh, whether they took it as literal at the time of the Buddha, I couldn't say. Probably so, but, you know, who knows. But we should work with them symbolically. <clears throat> Again, one reviews this body, however, it may be placed or disposed in terms of the elements. There are in this body the earth element, the water element, the fire element, the air element. So the traditional understanding of earth element is that earth element is solidity and extension. When I hold this pin out, the fact that it doesn't droop down is because it's got enough earth element that it'll extend out like that, okay? And then the water element is liquidity and cohesion. Uh, cohesion in the sense if you have flour and add water, it sticks together to become dough, or you have dust and add water, it sticks together to become mud. Fire is hot and cold. And air is the gaseous nature and also movement. This is the traditional understanding. Like I mentioned before, I have a background in physics. And so I prefer to use it more as earth is solids, water is liquid, air is gas, and fire is energy, which basically takes movement and moves it into the fire rather than the air part, but it's all sim symbolic anyhow. Uh, we have a simile, just as if a skilled butcher or his assistant, having slaughtered a cow, were to sit at a crossroads with the carcass divided into portions. So too, one reviews this very body in terms of the elements. There are in this body, earth element, water element, fire element, air element. So the idea is to stop looking at your body as me and look at it as solid bits, liquid bits, gaseous bits, and energetic bits. Uh, just like if you go to a butcher shop, uh, you don't see cow. You see hamburger, rump steak, sirloin, T-bone, etc. Okay. So it's a way to, yeah, look at your body differently than the way you normally do. Uh, also notice that at the time of the Buddha, there were no sacred cows in India. If today you were to go to India and slaughter a cow and sit at the crossroads, it would be rather unpleasant very, very quickly. Right? The, the idea of the sacred cow came later. 
So one does this internally and externally. So there are solid bits within you and there are solid bits around you. I mean, think about what you're sitting on. It's certainly not liquid, right? It's solid. It's not rock solid, hopefully, right? So there's solid internally and externally. Uh, you know, the, the four-legged member of the Sangha that was listening earlier got the same solid bits, liquid bits, gaseous bits, air bits that, yeah, just like we do. So internally and externally, arising and passing, um, ice melts, becomes goes from solid to liquid, right? So sometimes they, one of these will change into another. Uh, and thus, mindfulness is established just to the extent necessary for knowledge and awareness. And one abides independent, not clinging to anything in the world. And that is how one abides contemplating body as body. So I'm going to do a guided contemplation on the elements, but first I thought I would see if there are any questions or comments about the elements before I do the guided contemplation. Ryan. I was, it just occurred to me, is, is there some sort of uh, parallel some similarity between using these elements to like disaggregate the body and the five aggregates that you can kind of use to kind of try to disaggregate any phenomena to not see it as a solid object, but as just bits and pieces of things. I mean, is there some parallel be between these two? Yeah, very definitely. There's, we generally take something and we think it's a something. And we don't realize that a lot of what's going on is our conceptualizing whatever it is as a something. And so this is me. I mean, it's not you. It's got to be me, right? Yeah. And we, if we start taking the body apart and we see, oh, this is just a bunch of bits and pieces that are put together, it may give us a different view of what's going on. And it's the same thing with the, the five aggregates, which we will talk about uh, day after tomorrow. Uh, that it's a way of looking at our experience in some categories that help us get a deeper understanding of what we're experiencing. So both, both of them are break it into pieces and take a look. Now, you do have to be careful when you're breaking things into pieces uh, to realize that probably when you're breaking things into pieces, there are multiple ways to do that, right? I mean, you could look at your body in terms of arms and legs and feet and fingers and toes and heart. And heart. so that's the parts of the body, right? Okay, that's another way of looking at this body in a different way. This one is perhaps a more generalized thing of looking at the elements. Other questions or comments? Okay, so we'll do a guided contemplation. So get yourself settled and put your attention on your breathing for a few moments.
to drop the attention on your breath and start looking through your body for examples of earth element. Maybe the easiest thing to do is to press your tongue against your teeth and feel the solidity of your teeth. You might put your attention in your fingers and you can maybe notice the bones there. You can also notice the solidity of what they're touching. Just start looking through your body, looking for the solid bits, examples of earth element. Put your attention in your sits bones. That's earth element. And then notice that upon which you're sitting. It's solid. It's got earth element as well. Earth element meeting earth element. Notice your feet. Maybe you can feel the bones in your feet. And you can also feel that upon which they are resting. Earth element meeting earth element again. Now imagine that you stand up and start walking towards the door. As you're walking, you can feel the earth element in your bones of your legs and feet and the earth element in the floor. When you get to the door, you can put on your shoes, strap some earth element to your feet Put on your coat and go outside. Step onto the earth, earth element all around you. You go up to a tree, and you put your hand on the tree and feel its solidity. It's full of earth element. You find a rock, that's a whole bunch of earth element. If you see any animals, squirrels, chipmunk, dogs or cats, they have earth element just like you do. Although the bird's bones are hollow, they have bones. That's more earth element. And the buildings around you, yeah, they're standing up because of the solid bits. They're full of earth element as well. Just look around, see what you can see and notice how much of it is earth element. Now 
Now again, become aware of yourself sitting in this room. And now see if you can notice water element in your body. Easiest is going to be notice saliva in your mouth. Sometimes you can notice your heartbeat, your heart pumping liquid, blood, water element throughout your whole body. Of course, if you remember your high school biology, you know that you are about 70% water. If you were to stand up and then go outside, you would notice water around you. Maybe not puddles of water, but any greenery you see, yeah, that's because of water. You go up to that tree and maybe you see some sap. That sap is doing the same thing as your blood, carrying nutrients to other parts of the being. Any animals you encounter, they're as dependent on water as you. They're probably as much water as you if they're a mammal or a bird. It may be that you can find a puddle of water, put your fingers in it. Feel the liquid. And what's truly amazing is that water falls out of the sky. This planet wouldn't work if water didn't fall out of the sky. At least it would be just desert. In fact, the planet has the wrong name. What's really striking about it is water, not Earth. Because it's covered 70% with water. It's about the same ratio as the water in your body. Now again, become aware of yourself sitting in the room and see if you can notice the air element. Easiest is, of course, is gonna be pay attention to your breathing. Air coming in, air going out. Sometimes you notice other gaseous bits in your body. If you were to stand up and walk towards the door and pay careful attention, you could actually feel yourself pushing through the surrounding air, shoving it out of the way as you move. You go outside and if there's a breeze, you feel it, air pushing against you. You see the tree moving 
It's surprising you can go and wrap your arms around a tree and feel it moving in the wind. You see a bird flying by, supported by the air. And of course, that bird and any other animals you encounter are breathing air just like you do. You might find a puddle of water and there'd be bubbles in it, air coming out of the water. We actually live at the bottom of an ocean of air, 14 and a half pounds of pressure per square inch. That's actually quite a lot. You don't ever think about it, but if it were to go away, it would be most unpleasant. Once again, become aware of yourself sitting in the room and see if you can notice the fire element. Maybe the easiest is to pay attention to the parts of your body that are covered by clothing versus the parts that are exposed to the air. A difference in temperature, a difference in fire element. Pay attention to your hands. Notice how where they're touching something, it's warmer than where they're exposed to the air. And of course, you have a temperature, 37C, 98.6 Fahrenheit, that's actually kind of warm. If you get up and go outside, you notice a sudden lack of fire element. It's cold out there. You go up to that tree and put your hand on it, you can feel the cold of the tree. It hasn't got as much fire element as it does in the summer. If there's a puddle of liquid water, you know that it has some fire element in it as well, because otherwise it would have frozen. Any animals you encounter, their body temperature is probably going to be like yours. And the sun is beaming fire element at you from 93 million miles away. If there's a steep hill you can walk up, you can get all four elements going. I mean, first there's the earth element in the bones of your legs and feet, meeting the earth element of the path up the hill. And then you start wanting more air element, so you're breathing harder and you're working hard enough that your body temperature goes up even to the point where you've got too much fire element so you start sweating sending out water element to be evaporated to cool down some of that fire element
These are the four elements. This is what makes up the world, solids, liquids, gases, and energy, or earth, water, fire, and air. You can do this practice as a contemplation, just like we did it. Get yourself concentrated and just, yeah, we do the same thing. But I think it works better if you actually go outside and do it. You can do this as walking meditation, inside or outside. And that is pick an element. They start with earth element. And then as you're walking back and forth, you're trying to notice examples of earth element. There'll be earth element inside of you, your bones, and there'll be earth element around you, whatever you're walking upon and any buildings or trees or whatever you see. And you're just noticing solid things as you walk back and forth. And then when you get tired of working with earth element, then you switch to another element and find examples around you. You can do this practice when going for a walk. You can, yeah, do the same thing. Pick an element and as you're walking, just find examples of it everywhere. Or when going for a walk, just open up to whatever is present and examine it in terms of the elements. You see a tree and you think, well, there's solidity and it's got the sap, that's liquidity and it's moving in the wind and it's got a temperature. And then you see an animal and you think of the elements within it, etc. I personally find this more helpful off the cushion than on the cushion, but yeah, you can do it on the cushion just like I did the guided one. 